We created a Security Operations Center, or SOC, on the public internet, complete with several fully licensed enterprise cybersecurity tools, made available for community members to practice and gain hands-on experience with. Also within the community, we have several courses covering security operations, vulnerability management, threat hunting, resume and portfolio construction, as well as an optional internship that you can participate in to get actual experience to go on your resume and LinkedIn. My name is Josh Matacor. I'm a YouTuber and cybersecurity professional, and I've had a whole bunch of different cybersecurity jobs over the years, and I've helped a whole bunch of my audience members land jobs in IT and cybersecurity as well. If you find you're tired of your current career or you're interested in cybersecurity or you just want to make more money but you're risk adverse and you don't really know where to start, I have some good news for you that there is a whole bunch of people in the exact same boat. I was in the exact same position at one point and it's really frustrating when you have energy and you're willing to make a change but you don't exactly know what you're supposed to do in order to get from point A to point B. I've talked about this on my channel quite a bit but I honestly just didn't want to be poor. I was like tired of being poor but at the same time I wanted to be able to do something that I enjoyed a bit that had room for growth but I also didn't want to spend like three or four years trying to ramp up in school just to land some entry level job. So at that point, I didn't really know exactly what to do. So I just started doing whatever I could do, like a whole bunch of studying. I got a bunch of certifications, did a bunch of practice labs. I applied to a whole bunch of jobs. And eventually, after a few years of doing a bunch of random stuff, I just so happened to do enough of the right things and I landed my first job in cybersecurity. And from that point on, I actually did quite a bit more job hopping, but I've gotten to the point where it's relatively easy to maintain a salary in the like 100 to 200K range in corporate IT and cybersecurity. Through my long journey from basically going from a random poor person to being able to work in senior positions in corporate cybersecurity, I came up with a framework as well as a tier list of things that you should consider when trying to break into IT or cybersecurity. I've been able to test this framework with not only myself, but my community members as well as my course members over the years, and it works quite well. So instead of you having to flounder around for a few years like I did, I'm gonna talk about a few things like right now in this video that you can do to shrink those like few years time span down to several months of focused effort. So the first thing I want to talk about is the employability framework. This basically contains everything that you need to care about when you're trying to break into the field for the first time and get that first job. It sounds really simple, but everything really just boils down to being able to get an interview and pass the interview. If what you're doing doesn't directly help with one of these two areas, there's probably a better way that you can be using your time. A framework is nice, but how do you know what to start with? Like degrees, certifications, labs, like what is most important? So to go along with the framework, I actually came up with a tier list as well of things that employers actually care about about when it comes to considering you for an interview, like what's most important to least important. And when I say employers, I just mean anyone reviewing your resume. It could be the HR person, it could be the applicant tracking system like the automated scanner, or it could be the actual technical hiring manager. It's applicable to all of these people. These are things that you can have or do that will instill the most confidence in hiring managers that you're even worth interviewing. So starting at the very top with S tier, the best things is relevant real world experience or social network. Social network being like you have a direct reference from someone they trust saying you're good, for instance. And then we get A tier, which is relevant, extremely high-end content or projects or high-end certifications such as CISSP, OSCP, those GAIAC certifications, or even CCNA. And by high-end project, I mean like really high-end project. I don't mean like you copied a tutorial on YouTube, for instance. And then next is B tier would be like a relevant bachelor's degree, like a cybersecurity bachelor's degree or com computer science degree. C tier would be an associate's degree or some kind of entry level certification like CompTIA or Google. D tier would be like a high touch customer service job. And then F tier would be like a high school diploma, poor thoughtless projects or some random unknown certificates. And I don't wanna say like F tier is like bad because it's better than zero, but F tier just means like it's the least likely to instill confidence versus stuff in S tier, which is the most likely to instill confidence that you might be a good hire and worth interviewing. Some of these are obviously harder to obtain than others like experience, for example, but we'll address those in just a moment. Understand that this hierarchy is only for being considered for an interview. And if they can, employers and recruiters will only pick from S tier and A tier, especially when the job market is not the best. So if every single person has a bachelor's degree in Security Plus, it's gonna be hard to stand out and get an interview. In order to get interviewed, you need to distinguish yourself from your peers. And in order to do that, you need to do something that other people don't do, or you need to have something that other people don't have. Also, it's important to understand that not every single one of these things is required, right? For example, a degree is not necessarily required. Say you have like really good S tier and an A tier thing. The employer is going to care less about your B tier and below things, if that makes sense. Also understand that recruiters and employers don't sit around and like, okay, A tier, S tier, and like filter people by tiers. Like, I don't think they think like that. 
this is just a, a thing that you can use to gauge what's more important and like basically what they respond to. They will respond more to S tier things than to A tier things, than to B tier things, et cetera. It's just a way to think about how employers respond to things on your application and your resume. So getting into how the CyberRange community can help with this, I basically designed the CyberRange and the stuff inside of it to help with the most difficult areas in the tier list as well as the employability framework. So for example, experience, which is considered S tier, is addressed heavily not only in the course materials and dealing with the actual enterprise security tools like Tenable, Defender for Endpoint, Sentinel, and Azure, but it's addressed really heavily in the optional internship component as well, where you can do actual security related tasks to get some experience for your resume and your LinkedIn. This has actually been really effective because I've been doing a lot of employment verifications, probably more than one per week at this point for previous interns. I actually started keeping a list of everyone who landed a job and published it, so you can check that out if you want. Resume quality, application strategy, as well as interview preparation is thoroughly covered in the courses as well. We also produce some very high quality vulnerability management and threat hunting projects to go on your resume and LinkedIn to kind of help with that experience component as well. In addition to the shared cyber range lab environment that everyone's gonna be using together, we also have a weekly Q&A section where you can join every week and interact with me directly if you have any questions or advice or recommendations for the course or pretty much anything. It's just a time where we can come together and kind of have a, a big meeting and chat about stuff. So whether or not you're working as a restaurant manager, personal trainer, project manager, FedEx driver, or working at Chipotle, with proper planning and execution, it's possible to go from working literally anywhere to a job in IT or cybersecurity in well under a year. Getting into IT and cybersecurity is not really difficult at all. The problem is people don't know exactly what to do, so they end up floundering and doing a whole bunch of stuff for a long period of time until they do enough of the right stuff after a couple of years and then get a job, kind of like I did. But if you know the best things to do, you can kind of laser focus in on those things and reduce the time down from like a few years to several months. So if you have a laptop or some kind of computer and enough brain power to have found this video and watched it up to this point, you definitely have what it takes to break into entry level IT. It's just a matter of execution at this point. And to make things even easier within the community, we provide this kind of checklist or roadmap of different items that you can do, like things that you should try to accomplish while you're a member. And each item in the roadmap has a proficiency rating on it, like F tier through S tier. For example, one of the items is I think you should listen to certain cybersecurity podcasts to increase your cybersecurity vocabulary and industry awareness. And to reach S tier for that particular item, you would listen to 100 episodes of Darknet Diaries and 100 episodes of the CyberWire Daily, for instance. So if you're able to max out everything in this roadmap at S tier, it just puts you in a really, really strong position. So what happens if you sign up right now? If you sign up, you get access to the community, you introduce yourself, you get access to the cyber range, like all the labs and security tools, and then you start working your way through the modules. You take the recommended path through the community courses, you practice security operations in the live cyber range with the security tools, you do the internship task to get experience for your resume and LinkedIn, you max out the provided roadmap with all S tier items, S tier effort, you follow the job hunt strategy exactly, find a job, and then share your story with the community. So best case scenario is you join, you execute everything perfectly, and then you land more or less the exact job that you wanted. Most likely scenario is you join, you execute everything perfectly, and then you land some, maybe some random job in IT or cybersecurity. Maybe it's like not what you wanted to do initially, or it's in the not the ideal location, but you can still use that and then you get experience and then use that as leverage for future jobs. And then the worst case scenario is you just join, but you don't do anything at all. No execution, no nothing, which is actually more common than you might think. So if you're wondering if a job is guaranteed, uh, if anyone guarantees your employment, that person is definitely scamming you unless they're planning to hire you themselves. So what I can guarantee is if you go through the course and kind of do everything outlined in the roadmap and all the courses, if this bar is a representation of your ability to get a job or your likelihood to get a job, if you start here and you do everything, you're going to end up way over here. You're going to be way more employable with a way higher chance of finding a job sooner rather than later if you go everything and do the roadmap perfectly. Another thing I can guarantee that if you join and you go through everything and you do the roadmap at an S tier level, at least from a technical standpoint, I can guarantee that's going to turn you into a functional professional with actual experience who has done like actual stuff that's applicable to the real world and makes sense. And you're going to be better at interviewing than the average person probably is in industry. So if you're interested, click the link below and we will see you inside.